all right guys so let's talk about an another scenario in this tutorial and in this tutorial we are basically going to talk about overloading the varax type method is it a good idea to overload uh, the methods which which is accepting varax as a parameter so if you go with the java documentation it says that overloading the method with varax type argument is always not a good idea we will explore the reason why in this particular tutorial but let me start with this tutorial with a very simple example so let's talk about a method uh, let's say avoid m1 again so let's say is accepting an integer type array and let's give it a dummy implementation system.out.println um, let's say uh, m1 method um, array args called and let's have an another m1 method here but this time let's say this is accepting an int varax type argument let's say int a and let me copy this out and paste it over here and let's say um var args called okay let it be so if you talk about this kind of scenario so this is a very simple thing that you can guess if i will run this particular program it will give me compilation error the reason for that is very simple see this um, triple dot is actually an single dimensional array right i told you in the first tutorial that so this three ellipses here is going to work as a single dimensional array so this thing is same as this right so if i will compile this particular program obviously i'm going to get uh, an compilation error right so let me compile this particular program let me say java c var case dot java and you can see um you know i'm getting a compilation error over here so if i will zoom it a bit so you can see the error over here. I cannot declare both this method together because as you have discussed, the meaning of this method and this method is exactly same. And as you can see the error, it is just saying me cannot declare both M1 method of var types and uh, M1 method with int array type in a var case, right? So at a time, I cannot declare two methods like this, all right? This is very simple. All right, so now let's talk about the most important thing why overloading the varag types method is not actually a good idea why java says that overloading the varag types method is not actually a good approach so uh, let's talk about it right now so what i'm going to do over here let me delete this thing and let me create a method called sum and actually what i'm going to do I'm going to um, accept a in type uh, argument as a parameter so this is compulsory and after that you can pass any number of argument uh, I'm taking a var arg over here and let's say numbers okay and let me give it an implementation so let me say int sum equal to whatever the number that the user passed first let's say a and after that, I'm going to page all the numbers that user passed from the uh, from this. So I'll say here int temp and my array name is numbers. And I'm going to add it um, sum plus temp and I'm going to assign it with this sum again. So we have already discussed about it in our first tutorial. So exactly the same thing that I'm doing over here. And at last, let me return this sum here. Okay, so this is void. Let me change it to int. And similarly, let me overload this particular sum method. Let's say I'm creating an another sum method here. And in this time, what I'm gonna do I will make uh, compulsory to enter two values. So I am accepting uh, two different arguments of in type and this you must pass this. And then 
uh, actually I am going to allow the user to pass any number of numbers so I'm taking a bar arcs over here and let me say numbers and there you go and here what I'm going to do first I'm going to add this a and a and B and I'm going to assign it to a variable called sum and then I'm going to fetch all the numbers from the array so let's say 4 here and I'm going to say int temp and let's say temp here and let's say numbers okay and I'm actually going to add uh, the temp with the existing number that is sum and after that I'm going to assign this sum with this okay and at last as we know we have to return this sum here right so actually I have two different overloaded method where I have used this var arc types argument as well right so is this a good approach first of all let me do one thing let me compile this particular program so let me um, clear this thing so let me clear these things first all right so now first of all let me compile this particular program so I'll save this particular program and I'll compile this so let me say Java C var case dot Java so as you can see it compiles fine right JVM does not complain about it but now let's check this out if I'm going to uh, call one of this particular method what is going to happen right so JPM does not have any problem as of now we have already compiled the program and we have seen it's executing fine right so now let me create the object of this particular class and call one of his method let's say var case be equal to new var, new var case and p dot uh, sum and let's say I'm passing 10, 12, and 13 here. So now which particular method will be get called? Or will it be this? Or will it be this? Okay. So first of all, let's say uh, let's say I'm putting a system that out that print in here and let me say this first sum method and again let me copy this and paste it over here and let me say this um, second sum method all right so now which particular method will be got called the first one or the second one so technically if we'll see this 10 12 and 13 okay so this particular method can handle it well 10 and 12 and 13 the first element will be 10 that's fine then 12 and 13 well this particular uh, arcs can handle these two particular values right and what about this okay so now JBM says okay this particular method is going to work fine okay so what about this if you talk about this 10 okay the first value is 10 12 the second value is 12 fine then the 13 well this method also can take one arguments it can also handle 13 so these three values can be fit into this particular method and this particular method as well so if you are going to compile this particular program JVM is going to confuse which method to execute and it is going to give you an ambiguous I mean and uh, and compile time error as saying that you know both the methods are ambiguous to each other all right so now let me compile this particular program uh, so let me say Java C my class name is var case so I'll say var case dot Java and you can see I'm getting in compilation error it is saying the reference to sum is ambiguous right you can see the reference to sum is ambiguous you can see this line here uh, this because of uh, this piece of code that I have written here so actually whenever I'm trying to use one of this particular method I'm getting problem right but if I'm not writing this particular code if I'm commenting this out there is no problem JBM is saying you can write this kind of two methods but JBM, JBM is having problem whenever I'm trying to use one for an example if I'm if I'm commenting this particular line as I, as I have already told you right now here if I'm going to compile the program is compiling fine right but when when I'm trying to use it if I remove the code 
uh, remove the comment from here and if again I'm going to compile the program I'm having problem so when I'm, whenever I'm trying to use uh, one of the method I'm having problem right so this is one of the reason why you need to be so careful whenever you are trying to uh, work with overloading the better types argument method all right well so this is it for this tutorial uh, well there is one more thing that I am having in my mind right now but I'll give you the explanation might be in the next tutorial but I just cannot stop myself to say one more thing so let me remove all this core here okay so let me quickly show you one more scenario uh, maybe you'll get this question in your interview so I don't want you to miss this question so let me tell you that but it's already midnight here is one o'clock so I need to do this thing quickly because I need to get up early tomorrow morning so okay so let's talk about it very quickly so let's say I'm defining a method m1 here and in this m1 method I'm uh, taking a better types object uh, here let's say object O inside the m1 method and let me give it a uh, implementation system dot out dot println and let me say it um, inside m1 method all right okay so let me uh, so let's say I have a method like this and now let me call this particular method first of all I need to create an object so let's say var case t equal to new var case and t dot m1 okay so first of all here I want to pass three argument here null 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 so null can, null can be stored within a object right uh, so the object default value is null as you, as you guys know already so if I will pass this thing to this m1 method is it going to be called or am I going to get compilation error well obviously this particular method will be get called because uh, this null can be fit into uh, this object type here so if I'll compile this particular program well first of all let me clear these things off All right, so now let me compile this particular program. Let me say var cas, uh, I mean Java C var cas dot Java. Now, as you can see, this compiles fine. So right now, if I will remove one null, is it going to work fine or not? Obviously, this is going to work fine, right? Because uh, this can handle, you know, um, you know, any number of arguments. So I'm passing two different null over here. So right now if I'll save this and if I will run this again, this is working fine. This compiles fine as you can see over here. But what if, if I'm going to pass something like this, is it going to work or not? Obviously it doesn't matter how many elements we pass, right? This method should work, right? It can, we should be able to take any kind of arguments. I mean any number of arguments, right? but let me compile this particular program let me save it again and let me compile this particular program and as you can see I am getting an error so whenever I'm passing one null here to this particular method uh, this is just making a complaint right so actually I'm going to talk uh, about it in the next tutorial so today I'm going to stop the recording right now how to solve this thing also I'll tell you in the next tutorial but uh, okay, okay, so let me uh, just give you the solution for this. You can solve this thing by create by passing this null as an object array and I can put the semi I mean I can put the parenthesis here. I mean I can put the curly braces over here and Right now if I compiles this is gonna compiles fine and if I'm gonna run also This is going to run fine, right? So I can see inside M1 method is uh, I'm getting in the output console, right? So I'm going to tell you the reason in the next tutorial. So thank you very much guys for watching this tutorial. And if you like this tutorial, uh, don't forget to like this tutorial. And also you can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. So thank you very much guys. Have a nice day. Have a nice evening. Be happy and keep smiling. So I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and happy coding.